to introduce uh, our next speaker for today, Patrick Servan from Dresden University of Technology. Uh, he uh, will uh, present talk, exotic and the block exotic fusion systems, please. Yeah, thank you. You see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak at this conference. Um, yeah, I think it's a really good idea. And I hope someday it will be possible to do it in person again. I'd love to come. Uh, yeah. So I'm going to speak about exotic and block exotic fusion systems. And I'm going to start by uh, the most hands-on example for a fusion system, which is the fusion category of a finite group. So we take G to be a finite group and P a prime number. And then recall that if we fix some element G and G, and we look at the conjugation map from G to G, where we map X to G times X G inverse, this is an isomorphism. And if P to the K is the highest power of our prime P dividing the group order G of G, then a subgroup of this order is called a sile of P subgroup of G. And now we assume that this prime number P divides the group order and we fix a sile of P subgroup P of G. Now we can define the fusion category FPG of G on P by saying the objects shall be the subgroups of P. The morphisms shall be exactly those conjugation maps where they are well-defined. So for two subgroups Q and R of P, we take the conjugation map restricted to Q and map it to R such that G is any element in G where this is well-defined. It means if G acts on Q, it needs to be contained in R. And composition of morphisms is just the usual composition of group homomorphisms. Okay, so now, yeah, this is the, the fusion category of a finite group. So you see it's pretty hands-on, not too technical, not too abstract. So now what are fusion systems? Where a fusion system is a category where we somehow want the morphisms to behave similar to conjugation maps. And so we have the following axioms. So a fusion system is a category whose objects are the subgroups of a P group P and the morphism sets. So we always write HOM FQR like this um, are morphisms such that first of all, we only consider injective group homomorphisms to begin with. And also if we look at the homomorphisms induced by conjugation with an element of P, then they always need to be contained in here, in the homomorphisms in F. And if I take any arbitrary homomorphism in F, it needs to be the composition of an isomorphism and an inclusion. And again, the composition of morphisms is just the usual uh, composition of group homomorphisms. Okay, so if those axioms are fulfilled, we call F a fusion system, but the structures that we obtain like this, they are too um, general for applications. We need two more technical properties called the silo uh, property and the extension property. And when a fusion system that also fulfills those two additional properties is called a saturated fusion system. But for because they're quite technical, those axioms, I will not give them here. And whenever I say fusion system from now on, I will actually mean saturated fusion system. So why should we care about those fusion systems? Well, they have applications in several uh, disciplines of algebra. So firstly, in group theory, there's something called Aschbacher's program. And here the, the aim is to classify all two fusion systems to simplify the proof of the classification of finite simple groups. So how does it work? So if we look at a finite group G and we take a two subgroup um, P and we look at the normalizer of this two subgroup in G, then we call this a two local subgroup of G. And these are important in the proof of the classification of finite simple groups 
but they cause some difficulties because these uh, two local subgroups can have normal two prime subgroups. And if you use fusion systems, we can get rid of these difficulties because instead of studying the fusion system FPG, we can study the fusion system FP modulo O 2P prime of P um, G modulo O2 prime of G for a style of two subgroup P of G. And as you see, there can be no more two prime normal subgroups in this one. And those two fusion systems are equivalent. So it's a good way to get rid of these difficulties. And then where I am coming from originally, representation theory, we can approach local global conjectures with the help of um, fusion systems of blocks. And I will speak a little bit more about this later. And we can use fusion systems to express problems purely group theoretic. You will see later what I mean by that. And finally, in topology and in particular homotopy theory, abstract fusion systems are useful because they induce p-completed classifying spaces. Okay, so now what are exotic fusion systems? Well, um, if you recall the, uh, my first example, the fusion category, FPG, for a finite group on a G with a style of P subgroup P, then this it turns out this always is a fusion system. But not every fusion system needs to be of this form. So if we take any fusion system and we can find a group G such that F is equal to FP of G for some style of P subgroup P of G, then we call F realizable. If we cannot find such a group, we call F exotic. Okay, so we have seen what exotic fusion systems are. Now let's also see what block exotic fusion systems are. So we take K to be an algebraically closed field of characteristic P, a prime, and G a finite group, and Q a P subgroup of G. Then we have to define the Brauer map. So, and it's just the canonical map. Um, if we look at the group algebra of G, there's a canonical map to the group algebra of the centralizer of Q and G. Uh, we just forget all the coefficients that are not in the centralizer. And we always denote it by BRGQ. And this will, yeah, we'll need this map to define um, block fusion systems because so every uh, P block B of a finite group G induces a fusion system. And so for me, a block means a primitive central idempotent of KG. And this fusion system is then defined on a P group, subgroup of G, which is maximal with the condition that if we look at the bra map with respect to G and P and applied to B, it's non-zero. And such a P subgroup of G is called the defect group of a block. Then again, the morphisms are induced by conjugation in G. So, and they also need to fulfill some conditions similar to being well-defined for the fusion category. And then we denote this category by FPGB. And again, not every fusion system is of this form. If a fusion system F is of this form, we call it block realizable and we call B an F block. If F is not of this form, that means we cannot find a group G with a block B and defect group P such that F is equal to F P G B, we call F block exotic. Okay, so now I've introduced all the terms from my title. And now, of course, the obvious question is, how are those two terms related? And so we think that they're actually one and the same. So we have this conjecture that F be a fusion system on a P group P, then F is block exotic if and only if F is exotic. Okay, so why should we care about this? Well, I mentioned that fusion systems can be useful in representation theory. And um, so this works as follows. So let's say we have a, a statement about blocks. Then we can 
phrase it with, with just fusion systems of blocks. But now if you would know that this conjecture is true, instead of having the fusion system of a block in the statement, we could use the fusion system of a group in the statement and we will get rid of the blocks and could just try to tackle the statement with uh, all the group theory we know. And some famous conjectures where this is tried, that have been formulated um, for fusion systems, with fusion systems for this aim are the ordinary weight conjecture and the Alperin weight conjecture. Okay, so some remarks about this conjecture. So we only have to worry about one implication because a result called Power's third main theorem implies that every block exotic fusion system is exotic. So we only need to worry about exotic uh, is implies block exotic. And so if P is an abelian group, the conjecture is true. And the reason is just because there are no exotic fusion systems. If P is extra special of order P cubed, the conjecture is true by Kessa Stanku. So this was the first family of groups for which it was proven. And then if P is a sile of P subgroup uh, of G2 P to the N or a P S U4 P to the N where P is any prime and N is any natural number, I proved um, recently that the conjecture also holds true. And there's some more like very uh, cases where I also proved it for, but they're more complicated to write down all the assumptions. So this is more smooth. This is more uh, compact. Yeah. Okay, but so most people or every everyone working with fusion systems is convinced that this conjecture is true, but we're still a very long way from proving it. So let's say a bit, say a few words about how we would want to prove this conjecture. So we would like to have a general reduction to quasi-simple groups. We have some uh, reductions to quasi-simple groups, but they're always very specific. And at some point, we will need to use the classification of finite simple groups, pro uh, groups probably to prove the conjecture for all blocks of uh, quasi-simple groups. And it turns out that we actually need another category uh, than block fusion systems to work, to approve some of these statements about block fusion systems, because uh, fusion systems, there's some, uh, block fusion systems have some issues when we um, want to descend to normal subgroups. So we need the following more general structure and proof of reductions, and they're called generalized block fusion systems. So we here we have G a finite group with normal subgroup N, and we take C to be a G stable block of N. Then we can define a fusion system F, P, G, and C on a P, a P subgroup of G, such that we, if we look at the Brouwer map with respect to N and P, and we apply it to C, it's, non, it's not zero. So here, there's some uh, slight differences to block fusion systems. So here, the, the P subgroup on which we define the fusion system does not need to be contained in N. Um, and it's in general not a defect group of C. And so this category behaves better with respect to Clifford theory and it allows a descent to normal subgroups. So let's say we look, the problem with block fusion systems is if we look at the fusion system of a block of a normal subgroup of some group and we look at the block that lies above it in the bigger group, then there doesn't need to be any relation between the two fusion systems. So the fusion system of the block of the bigger group can be trivial, and the fusion system of the block of the smaller group can be non-trivial. So, but if we use these generalized block fusion systems that depend on um, not just on a block and a group, but also on a normal inclusion, we uh, we ha can have a descent to a normal subgroup. So though this fusion system sees relations to um, normal subgroups. OK, so this category will be needed to prove the conjecture for sure. And so for the rest of my talk, I'm going to say a few words about where we are at with the conjecture for quasi-simple groups. So 
uh, if we look at the sporadic groups, you know there are only 26 ones. Um, it's known there. And I mean, because it's a finite amount, you can you could check it by case by case. If you look at alternating groups, it's also known because their a representation theory is very well understood. And if so, that brings us to the um, only type of groups that's left uh, for the non abelian finite simple groups are groups of Lie type. And there we, we have to differentiate between groups of Lie type in defining characteristic and in non defining characteristic. So if you look at groups of Lie type in defining characteristic, the conjecture also is known to hold because here the um, defect groups of blocks are either trivial uh, or style of P subgroups. So in both ways, we don't need to worry. And this brings us to groups of Lie type in non-defining characteristic. And for these, Mark Caban proved the conjecture if P is at least seven and the block is unipotent. So here I'm gonna need to use some language uh, of groups of Lie type. And so if we study the uh, irreducible characters of groups of Lie type, they are labeled by so-called semi-simple elements and the easiest semi-simple element that you can think of is the trivial element one. So if you take one as your semi-simple element and you look at the characters corresponding to one, you call them unipotent characters. And then a block is a block containing at least one unipotent character. So, and for those blocks, Mark Caban proved the theorem recently. And so, but he had, he, um, a lot of the work he already did in the 90s together with Michel Angois. And so it's as follows. So we take G to be a reductive group over a field of order Q with associated Frobenius F and P a prime, which is at least seven and Q is core prime to P and B is a unipotent P block of GF with defect group P. Then the fusion system FP GFB is non-exotic. And now, so from this, we would like to get rid, uh, for, uh, somehow generalize from unipotent blocks to general blocks. And that's what I spend a lot of time in my PhD thesis. So, and there's some methods by Bonafé, Dutt, and Roquier that we can try to use. So, there, so they proved the theorem, and I'm gonna state it in a very simplified version. So we take G to be a connected reductive group with Frobenius F. We take D to be an arbitrary block of GF. Then there exists a Levy subgroup L of G, a group N, which is contained in the normalizer of this Levy, and a block C of the fixed point points under F of this group N, covering a unipotent block of LF, such that the fusion system of C is equivalent to the fusion system of D. And this for this, we need that N modulo L is cyclic. Okay, so what's the idea here? Okay, we take D to be an arbitrary block of a group of Lie type, and then we see, okay, instead of studying this block of this group of Lie type, we can study the block of this group uh, NF, which, and the block lies over a unipotent block. And for unipotent blocks, we know what happens. So we need to understand this group N very well, and that's what I tried a lot to do in my uh, thesis. But it's very hard. Uh, I tried to calculate it for some uh, ex for some examples, and it's hard to see what happens. But I managed to uh, generalize Caban's result as follows and link it to the result of Bonafé, Dutt, and Roquier. So we take L, N, and F to be as in the theorem by Bonafé, Dutt, and Roquier, and we take B to be unipotent block of LF with defect group P. Then if you look at the generalized block fusion system, FP, NF, LFB, then this is non-exotic. Okay, so first of all, note that here in this case, uh, B, uh, P is really a defect group of B because N modulo L is also P prime here. And if uh, this the normal extension is P prime here, we always have a defect group. 
And so now by, by, uh, by bona fide Rookie, we, we, to understand the fusion system of any block of a group of Lie type, we need to understand the fusion system uh, of, the, of a block of this group NF. And here, um, I don't quite prove it for the fusion system of NF, but for the generalized fusion system, which also depends on, uh, on NF and LF. So, and I somehow hope to make this the bridge to understand the fusion system of NF and the block covering B. But it's still a long, very long way to go, and it will take at least a few more years before there will be another result, I would think. Okay, so a few words about the proof. So um, here I, so and for proving this, I also have, I proved some new reduction results, and I also used the, uh, the methods uh, Marc Caban developed with Michel Angois in the 90s, but I actually did not use uh, the proof, uh, the um, result by Caban. So I have a more general alternative uh, proof to his results. Okay. Yeah, this is already all I wanted to say. Obviously, um, I left, I had to leave out some details because I didn't want to go, I didn't want to speak too, too long and I also didn't want to overwhelm you with details but of course if you have any questions um, and if you want to know more about more details I'm very happy to talk about it thank you